Hello, my name is Paul Stewart and I'm in Nandi, which is the main international airport in Fiji. And later this morning, I'm flying back to Sydney with Fiji Airlines in business class in their brand new Airbus A350, which is pretty exciting. In fact, everyone's quite excited about it. So far, I've had about three taxi drivers ask me if I'm on the new aircraft. So let's go inside and see what it's like. Here we are inside the departure terminal, which is all pretty new and quite spacious. It seems that any airline uses any check-in counter, so my plan of just looking for the Fiji Airlines sign failed, but I eventually found the premium check-in area if you keep walking right towards the departure gates. Then once we got through customs, we head up some stairs before catching a lift or escalators back down to the lounge. The Fiji Airways Premier Lounge is pretty new and quite impressive. Now unfortunately there are no views of the airport apron, but otherwise it has a fantastic ambience. This living wall, and yes all of the plants are real, looks great and there's plenty of seating. It was around 7.30am and there were of two a la carte options, an omelette or an eggs benedict with salmon and I went with the latter. There's also a buffet of both hot and cold options, as well as a few different cereals and bakery items. There's also a bar with a barista who delivers your drinks to your table. I sat down for breakfast with my regular long black coffee and after that I went and found one of the comfy chairs. I should point out as well that there are plenty of power plugs around the lounge as well as free Wi-Fi. As I mentioned in the intro, everyone is very excited about the new A350 and there was this video playing in the lounge providing some great views which partially made up for no view of the real planes. And finally, just before I head to the departure gate, here's the shower which is inside the male bathroom and there's only one. I didn't check, but I assume there's also one in the female toilet as well. This would be pretty invaluable during a layover before a long flight to North America, although there doesn't appear to be any queuing system, so I guess you just have to loiter around the bathroom. On the left, we had the old flagship, the A330, and this beauty on the right is the new A350 only delivered to Fiji Airways late last month. This is the first A350 operating in the Oceania region, and they plan to fly them on the Sydney and Los Angeles routes are from Nandi. The gate opened and we got on board. The business class cabin is on the left and the seats are all in a one-to-one -one layout so every seat has direct aisle access. Here's my seat which I'll show you shortly but quickly let's go and check out the rest of the aircraft. Here's the economy section in a 3-3-3 layout although the first few rows are what they call Buller Space which is essentially the standard seat but with more leg room. This is a great option if you need the extra room but can't stomach the jump to the business class prices. All of the economy seats come with this adjustable touchscreen, which has a USB port underneath it, as well as a power plug down to your knees. For comparison's sake, here's the legroom in the standard economy seat. And most excitingly, unlike in a lot of new airliners, Fiji have ordered their A350s with individual overhead air vents. Here's a different perspective of the fantastic looking winglets, and as I continue my walk, I was fortunate enough to be allowed into the crew rest area, which I knew existed, but I didn't realise it was so large. It actually has uh, eight separate lie flat beds, which was impressive. and my tour ends with a different view of the fantastic Rolls-Royce Trent XWB engine. I did also manage to get into the flight deck when we landed in Sydney, but I'll put that at the end of the video. Now that we're back in the business cabin, let me show you through my seat 19K in more detail.
In front of you is the Touch TV screen, which I'll mention later, and below that is the fold-out table. Considering the fact that it only has one attachment to the seat itself, it actually felt pretty sturdy. On the right side is a large ledge which opens up to reveal a storage spot, which also includes the power plug and two USB ports. There's also the in-flight entertainment remote controller in here if you don't want to use a touchscreen. And next to that is another enclosed cubby hole. There's another great view outside and here's the magazine holder and a reading light. And then if we swap over to the other side, there's another storage spot with noise cancelling headphones and a bottle of water inside. This whole thing raises up, forming part of the armrest. And then back in front, there's plenty of leg room, as well as another storage spot and individual overhead air vents, which is awesome as so many airlines are getting rid of them in newer aircraft. One thing I did forget to record was a seat adjustment, which appears on this screen. And if you are traveling as a couple, the middle seats are an option and they have this adjustable privacy barrier. There's also Wi-Fi, although unfortunately this cost extra irrespective of travel class. Water, mocktails and champagne were offered, as was a wet towel. And just before we depart, I'll have a quick look at the in-flight entertainment. As I mentioned before, it's a touch screen and responded perfectly quickly. The amount of content is probably lacking and as you can see here, they only include two episodes from a specific TV series. Many others would have a full season available. They do have these two cool camera views though, which is great if you're stuck without a window seat. And there's also the in-flight moving map, which I really enjoy using to get my bearings and identify locations I can see out the window. And finally, a quick preview of Star Wars to show you the screen quality, which was fine. That's this aircraft covered in pretty good detail, so let's back out and head for the runway. It's really cool seeing how proud of this aircraft everyone has been, and you can see staff all lining up to watch as we backed out. I love this view of the winglet with the maintenance center and the mountains in the background as well. The view taking off was pretty epic as was the roar from the engines but in this video I'll edit through the takeoff and upload the full takeoff and landing in a separate video and I'll link to that in the video description below. After we leveled out a little, a round of drinks was offered and I attempted to be artistic with this local rum. Unfortunately there weren't any nuts or nibbles like in my A330 flight in the opposite direction two days prior. A brunch was served and I went for this fantastic tasting crepe which was filled with caramelised apple pieces and served with crumb anglaise and chocolate crumble topping. There was also a bread roll, some fruit salad and a coffee. By the way, I'll include photos of the full menus at the end of the video. Following that, I thought it was time to relax, so I put the seat into fully flat mode. Unfortunately, the lack of a manti kit and eye shades would have made sleeping a little difficult if anyone left the window shade up, so instead I watched a movie. Next up, for those who wondered what an A350's toilet looked like, well, wonder no more. This is one of two of them that they have up front in the galley. The views outside were fantastic and if you look closely, you can see the Isle of Pineson at the southern end of New Caledonia. Since I'm in the middle of the flight, I thought I might as well plug my YouTube channel. I have many similar videos and if you're a fan of Fiji Airways, I've got a few upcoming videos inside the A330 and a stunning fly day inside an ATR-72 and a Twin Otter. The views from those last two flights in particular were pretty fantastic. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook as well. 
It looks like we were making up too much time so air traffic control got us to fly a few loops, which again provided some great views out of the window. So in conclusion, what is Fuji Airways' brand new A350 like? I'll start with the positives. The aircraft itself is really good as it's quiet and the humidity levels are much nicer than the older generation of aircraft, which is something that you'll really appreciate on longer flights like the one to Los Angeles. The seat is also great and I particularly like the multiple enclosed storage spots as I tend to carry a lot of bits and bobs. So what wasn't good? Well I must preface this with a bit of an explanation. I could have flown on the inaugural flight the day beforehand, but I intentionally didn't because of two reasons. Firstly, I wanted to visit Fiji for more than one night, and secondly, I want to show you what it's really like flying with a certain airline. Inaugural flights are stage managed and don't reflect what an actual standard flight is going to be like. I pay for all of my flights and I'm not seeking favours from airlines, and because of this, I can be honest. The service on the ground was great with fantastic lounge staff, but on board, it was a totally different story and it really let the whole experience down. I always make an effort to remember my primary flight attendant's name, but they never introduced themselves. In fact, no one ever really engaged in any conversation at all. This was in stark contrast with the incredible friendliness I'd experienced over the last 48 hours on three other Fiji Airlines flights, as well as in my hotel and restaurants. I only used the call bell once, and after 10 minutes of multiple crew walking past seemingly ignoring me, I cancelled and pressed it again. When someone eventually came, they acted as if I'd accidentally pressed it, rather than asking what my request was. I had to chase them down and actually ask a question, which was about the Wi-Fi. At no stage did anyone use passengers' names during the flight, and they really didn't have the same level of excitement about the new aircraft as everyone else at the airport, or even me. Obviously, a bigger seat is a big part of business class, but for me, it's the interactions with the crew that I really enjoy, and the vast majority of my flights have been great, but sadly, in this instance, a good aircraft was let down. I spent quite a while thinking about how honest I would be in my comments about the crew, as I really don't want to get anyone in trouble, and it's never nice to be mean, but it's the reality. I really wanted to enjoy this flight, as I loved my first time in Fiji, and a few little slip-ups, a fine and a friendly crew member can easily make up for some service failings, but when it's consistently bad, well, I kind of have to be honest. So I guess that's a bit of a disappointing end to the video on board this great new aircraft. With improved service, this flight would have been really good and it's a great trans-Pacific option. As I said before, they'll be adding the A350 from flights between Sydney and Los Angeles via Nandi from later this month. And I know this airline can do it as the crew flying in the opposite direction were great. Another good thing about them is that they're sort of partners of the One World Alliance, so passengers with Qantas status also get perks and you earn points and status credits. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so, please give it a thumbs up. Like I said, I've got more Fiji Airlines videos coming up and all of them are far more positive so make sure you keep an eye out for those. Thanks for watching and coming up is a brief look in the flight deck followed by the menus. Hello, do you mind if I take some pictures? Yeah, no problem. I was really surprised by how spacious the flight deck was and apologies I didn't spend more time in here as the crew were obviously busy and I didn't want to disrupt them any further. A thanks to the captain and the co-pilot for letting me briefly visit.